Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So officially we just hit spring and I am so excited to go out and fly again. And also due to the DJI FPV products that have been released currently, we are getting an influx of new people and I'm getting a ton of emails. So I decided just to make a quick updated video of some of the recommended components to get started from budget to somewhat expensive. It's not a comprehensive list, but this is what I would actually purchase for myself and I have been tested and I have more than one quadcopter with these uh, components here. So let's get started. First of all, we're going to start off with the stack. Now, if you don't know what a stack is, it just basically means the flight control and the ESC. And especially if you're new, I'd highly recommend you buy them together because the connection process would be much simpler and it would be with just a single wire, which is, as you can tell, that wire right there. Usually, or back in the day, we had to solder every single one and have them perfect. So again, highly recommended you get a stack here. So this is the cheapest on the list currently. You can find cheaper, they're somewhat decent, but this has proven itself to be an insane value for what it is. And it's not because of the flight controller, it's actually because of the ESC. Now if you, again, if you don't know what an ESC is, it is the electronic speed controller. It is the thing that controls your motors and sends the power delivery there. So it is one of the most crucial component on a quadcopter, in my opinion, because some of these have some noise and can give you an absolute nightmare. And what do I mean by that? Well, the thing is, when a quadcopter, we mix DC and AC circuits, and those don't really get along. So sometimes some voltage will come back into the system, which could fry components or just introduce weird behaviors and twitching and and stuff you really can't fix unless you put a low ESR capacitor but that doesn't always guarantee a fix so this is why I'm recommending what I'm recommending save you a headache and also save you cash so the first one again is the diatone mumba f405 now again if we're looking at the title here we see that it's rocking the f50 ESCs and I have tested these these are by far the best bang for your buck you could purchase ESC because the performance is absolutely phenomenal and it is on my two main quadcopter so it has been tested for over six months now probably even more than that I don't even remember anymore however it's still running very solid now the flight controller here doesn't have much features here but it should get you going there are other ones which have a bit more more features as well but what we can see is we have a beautiful 9 volt regulator right there and the reason we have that there is to also enable you to get good video feed especially if you're on analog if you're digital this will also work just fine um, however it won't be as plug and play you'll have to solder four wires if you don't have the controller which would be like a UART, a 9 volt and a ground, and you should be good to go with the DJI setup. And when I put this into the list, this is the cheapest, best thing you could possibly purchase, um, in my opinion, and I believe a bunch of people would agree with me, uh, because this has been in the market for quite some time, and it's just been so reliable, and they're still making it, and they're still making it for a reason here. Next, we move up slightly a bit more expensive, about a dollar more expensive, depending on where you purchase it from. Now, the flight controllers from iFlight are good. Now, as you can tell, they've redesigned the ESC. If, if you're new, I don't know if you know that, but they've re redesigned the ESC because recently I did have issues with their previous Eco models, and it's on high demanding quadcopters, which are basically very powerful. Uh, the voltage spikes could be very bad, and it could, one time it made my quadcopter flip out of nowhere. And that's what I mean. It kind of affects other electronics on the system, such as the gyro. It makes it think that something is happening when it's actually not happening. And you can't really fix that unless you do some, some other stuff to it, like adding a low ESR capacitor. But it doesn't always guarantee a fix here. And uh, this is the new ESC. I haven't done any noise testing on it yet. But a, a good rule to follow by when you look at an ESC is to look at these capacitors. The more, the better. It, it doesn't always mean that it's going to be a better ESC. However, throughout the years of ESC noise testing on my setup, what I've noticed is the more capacitor, you are more likely to be better off. So this one has a bit too little for my liking here. So this one hasn't been fully tested, but it should be okay to get you going. You're not going to have any problems because it's also a well-known brand. And if you do have any issues, you could email them. But again, I personally, personally would not purchase this. I'd pick this one up with the F50 or the F60 ESCs from Mumba. They're actually really great. And we're like, okay, well, where's the T-Motor ESCs? Well, uh, it's a, you know, I've gotten a bunch of emails that are good. Some say that they're bad. From my noise testing, I noticed that the 45 amp was the best. Uh, but I don't think it's as good as these, if I remember correctly. And that's the reason why I don't put it there, because I haven't had much time to use it as well. And uh, I stuck to what I know and what I could recommend and what I would actually pick up myself here. 
Next we have is a Mamba F405 DJI. This is exactly the same as the previous one. However, the flight controller is slightly different, but the ESC is exactly identical. This one just makes your life a little bit easier with the HD setup. And just because it has the word DJI in there doesn't mean that it's only for the DJI HD setup. You could also use analog just fine. And what's really nice also is they do provide you with, again, a nine volt regulator here. So you'll do, you could do both ways. Now, I would personally recommend if you are planning on upgrading to an HD setup later on, pick this one up instead of this one. Again, they're both really basically identical, except uh, this one here just gives you that extra connector. Just quickly plug in your DJI setup and you're good to go. So yeah, just keep that in mind. And again, everything here is linked down below and is affiliated. So if you do check those out, let's go support the channel. Next we have is another Mamba stack. Now this one again with the same ESC, but this is the Pro variant, which means it has a heatsink. Not a big difference. I usually pop the heatsinks off anyways for most reviews and I end up using it without a heatsink. So it's not a big deal here, but it does help in the long run. Uh, this one is just an F7 flight controller. It's just the latest and greatest and the most powerful in a way. And it does have some other features like Wi-Fi, I believe, or Bluetooth, I think this one has. Um, not a must, it's nice to have, but it's not a must. It's not gonna make a big difference from the other ones I just showed you, except the F7 part. And that's that's really about it. It just comes down to the ESC in my opinion. All these flight controllers work really great. Uh, next we have is another F7 with an F60. So this is a bit more powerful and a bit better ESC from Mamba. The, the previous ones we were looking at were the F50s. These are the F60s and it's actually the Pro, which means it comes with a heatsink and uh, it has no Wi-Fi. You really don't need Wi-Fi. And it has a lot of other great features here, which is such as a nine volt regulator, which is, in my opinion, one of the most important things to have on a uh, flight controller in order to get clean video feed in case anything happens and protects your overall uh, VTX and your camera. Actually, not the camera, just your video transmitter mainly. Um, so here's another stack. This is an F7. Uh, this I would probably pick up as well if I wanted an F7, but it's not a big deal. You don't have to go with F7s just yet. It's not really mandatory to run F7s. So we're still uh, okay with F405, and most of my main quadcopters are actually running F405, and I don't have a problem. The only the only noticeable difference you'll have is where you, if you have an S bus receiver, where it would be connected, and that's about it. Uh, these are all great uh, flight controllers. So now we're going to jump into the video transmitter part. And again, this is not a very comprehensive list, but this is just a list to get you going and stuff that's actually uh, been used and highly recommended. Now, I have used this on three quadcopters and yet I've had no issues with. This is kind of like the most budget-ish, almost cheap uh, video transmitter you could get right now. What's really nice is also you could stack this on a 30 by 30 stack. That's why you have the holes here. It does have a microphone. We're going to use that. And it is using MMCX for the connector type. And it does come with these two. So if you don't have enough cash yet to purchase even some antennas, you could just stick this little black one on. But again, never power these on without an antenna connected or you'll fry it. So keep that in mind. So next on the video transmitter part, these are the top 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 video trans or one of the top uh which is by rush fpv they just specialize in basically video transmitters and they have come into the market with flight controllers and other components as well which seems to actually work really great however we still need a bit more time to fully understand the full picture of those but the video transmitters here uh people will swear by i do swear by because i am just impressed how they perform and there's so many different types like i believe this is currently one of the cheapest ones they run and as you can tell it's a 30 by 30 stack which means you you could just stack it in uh to a frame which we're going to cover the frames as well towards uh the end of the video here so this one is recommended we also have this one so this one is also really great and what's really nice with this is you can kind of mount it almost anywhere and just double side tape that somewhere in your frame that's what i usually do with this one and it does have a really nice microphone as well and it is also mmcx as you can tell right here so you really want to stick to mmcx for antennas unless you're running some sort of a micro next one we have a smaller variant this is a 20 by 20 stacking solution so if you had a micro and you wanted a proper video transmitter actually the analog then this is the type of thing you'd actually pick up. Um, or you could pick up some other ones also. The Nanos are actually really great, but this is like the high end, really good, uh, that you know you'll get pretty decent range and not have any issues with. So now we're moving to frames. So there's so many frames in the market. There's cheap ones, there's good ones, there's, there's all kinds of them. But the ones that I always limit myself to, and um, well, no, I've tried so many, but the ones that I truly like working with and just have lasted so a good time and have been proven to work really great, especially with Betaflight default PIDs, would be, for example, this is one of the cheapest one, which is the XL5 V4 from iFlight. 
really great replaceable arms which means if you break an arm you can easily just buy it a new arm stick it in you're good to go you don't have to replace that whole bottom plate remove all your electronics and everything of that nature another thing what's really nice with iFlight frames is they do come with a with a lot of hardware and proper hardware which means the screws and just about everything you need you will rarely ever have anything missing you and that's something again really nice here now if we grab a closer look here there's also some other aspects to frames you should take into consideration as well such as the mounting hole. So here what we can see is it's running 30 by 30 mounting hole for a flight control. And you could also run 20 by 20 here. So if you had a 20 by 20 flight controller, you can do that here. And in the back, I don't remember if this can actually hold a 20 by 20, but I don't really remember. However, I know in the next ones we do have that, but these could be useful for something as well back here. Uh, and they do come with the 3D printed parts, which actually make the overall build much cleaner. So it has a place for it to hold its uh, video transmitters. You can tell that 3D printed part right there actually goes in and it has like a little cavity where you could stick your little receiver in there. So it, you don't have to worry about it being just flapping around everywhere, which again is really nice here. So that's another little nice touch from uh, iFly, other than the fact that their carbon is pretty good as well. Next down the line, this is my personal favorite frame from GetRC. There's actually two different variants where I'm going to show you. This is the analog variant and there's the HD variant. The only difference is like three bucks here. And what's really cool is you could pick between five up to seven inch. I recommend five if you're new. Later on, go up the scale. Now, if we scroll down here, what I want to show you is you have plenty of space and that right there in the back, let's hopefully find a better view. So the main middle part where the stacking solution is, we have 30 by 30 and we have 20 by 20 stacking solutions. So if you wanted to go micro or you wanted to go big, you can easily do that. And what I wanted to show you is probably we'll just see it from right here. So this is the back area. It might be a little bit difficult to see, but I'll try to do my best here. What we can see, this is again, sorry, the middle area. And here we have the back area. This one, this one, this one, and this one are actually 30 by 30s. And this one, this one, this one, and this one are 20 by 20. So you can actually have two stacks. Uh, so if you had some VTX that takes a 30 by 30 stack, you could stick it in the back. And it just keeps the overall build very clean and very elegant and well balanced as well. Now, um, if you are thinking of upgrading to HD, uh, then I would recommend you get the HD version. And even if you're still running analog in the beginning, it's fine. It has all of those features. It's slightly longer, but that's about it. And it runs really great. It runs just the same. De default beta flight PIDs on these guys and, and you're good to go. And they last quite a while and you can find a bunch of 3D printed parts actually. And what's really nice with this is once you add those 3D printed parts, the thing is going to last quite a bit of time. My mines are still rocking solid. Those are my favorite frames. And those are the ones I still use to this day. And believe it or not, they're even running racer star motors. Um, just because I crash it a lot and usually the motors break and I just, those are just so cheap and they work really great for what I use them for. So yeah, these are going to be linked down below. Next one down the line is a bit more expensive, four bucks more expensive to say, um, but the HD is a little bit more expensive than that. So this is also a really good frame and it's going to be in my upcoming build. I think I have the normal version currently. These are built rock solid. The arms are super thick. And again, it's from iFlight and this is a five inch quadcopter. So you could pick whatever one you want. These fly really great. They have enough space to hold just about everything from your GoPro and just everything is well thought of and the 3D printed parts you can find a bunch of stuff for. Uh, the mounting solution also, if we take a closer look at it, it should theoretically have a double stacking solution and it does. You could kind of see, hopefully you can see it on the video, but it does have a 20 by 20 in the back and a 30 by 30. And in the middle, we also do have 20 by 20 and 30 by 30, which is really nice. And it's kind of hard to not get a frame that doesn't have that unless you have a specific application you're going for. This is just being in general FPV, which I highly recommend everybody to have one of these quadcopters, you know, a five inch basic quadcopter, not going the ultralight route or the scene whoop. It's really recommended to have at least one of these or maybe even start with one of these because scene whoops could be an absolute nightmare if you started with that because that won't give you the real experience. And scene whoops have like a really specific use case, which um, I don't think a lot of people really need currently. So again, what's really nice with iFly, every single 3D printed part you see here is actually included, depending on what you chose. So for example, if you chose the HD, then you get this part. If you didn't, you'll still get everything else, like the little lip protector, the back protector, this back stuff here, also these arm protectors. Definitely add those. I know it increases the weight, but it will increase the overall lifespan of the quadcopter, even protect the motors at times. So that's something to keep in mind as well. And um, I usually tend to put them on uh, if I'm going to go flying. So this right here is a kit. Now this kit is a pretty proper kit. Uh, however, 
it is using the old iFlight ESC, which is the one that could kind of cause a little problems, depending on your setup here. These are kind of pretty pretty power hungry motors, so you might run into something, but I'd highly recommend you would add a low ESR capacitor, you could be okay. But I just wanted to put this here because it's at a pretty decent price. However, with this kit, you're still missing a couple things. You're missing a receiver, you are missing the, uh, what is it called? You're missing the video transmitter, and you are missing a camera. So that's something you probably want to look into getting here if you do pick this up. But um, yeah, overall, everything else is pretty nice. I've used these motors, they're really nice motors. These are high KV 4S motors. Um, so yeah, it'll be, it'll be a screamer. And with this ESC, I'd highly recommend you probably add low ESR capacitor so you don't have any weird twitches, jitters, or anything going on with that quadcopter. Now we're going to cover motors. So I know a lot of people hate Racer Star motors. Now, in, in reality, they don't last that long. However, the thing is, especially if you're new or especially if you're flying in, uh, let's just say, areas where it's just concrete and metal everywhere, like bandos, and these are very good. And why do I say that? They're not the most powerful. They're not the fastest. They're pretty efficient, though. But when they break, they're so cheap to replace. And that's why they're on my main quadcopter. I call them my basher quadcopters because it just gives you that extra confidence to push whatever you want to do. Hit that gap. If you break it, you break a motor. You're down like, I don't know, 10 bucks or something. And uh, or probably even less. Yeah, less than 10 bucks, maybe $9 or less, probably. So that's why I always have a at least 10 of these spare with me when I go flying and just quickly just replace them. I'm good to go. And uh, I, I don't feel bad if I do break one of these. And this is just my point of view here. Now, there are also other really great cheap motors, which I'm going to show you as well. But again, if you're new, just get these because you are really likely to break your motors, like really likely. And these are always available. You can almost find them anywhere. Next down the line, we have the Shing motors. Now, the Shing E is the budget line, but most of their Shing motors are actually really great. Um, if you're new, you're not going to notice any differences between all of them, but you would notice the difference between a Racer Star motor and a Shing motor, that's for sure. Um, but these are pretty good, actually. This is a 6S setup right now, which I'll have linked down below. I'll find some other Shing motors as well for you for 6S and 4S, uh, so you can see what you want to use here. Uh, next one down the line is the Emacs Eco 2 motors. Actually, really great motors. I really, truly love them. Uh, and I'm, again, I'm just showing you the budget motors right now. These perform just like uh, high-performance motors, actually. Premium motors. Uh, you won't really notice that much of a difference. So you do have uh, 4S, 6S. Uh, this is the 4S, and these two would be the theoretical 6S here. This might be a bit too much for 6S. Maybe a 5S would be good for this one. But yeah, you could do your research on KV. Maybe I'll do a separate video on that later on. Now here, what we have is more Emacs Eco. Now these are the first generation Emacs Ecos. And a lot of people were complaining that the bearings weren't lasting that long. But you know, that's, I, I, I've never had that happen to me, but that's something I just wanted to share with you guys, just for you guys to know. And that's really, it. I just wanted to make this as quick as possible, just for some people to just put you in the right track here, um, that you don't have to go super expensive to get high performance you get almost like probably even better performance than some other more expensive stuff here just because this thing ha these things have been tested for quite some time and we know how they perform and a lot of people stand by that and if, if you do if you have any questions leave it down below many people will answer you not only me so that's what's really nice about this community as well uh next list i'll go into in depth into fpv goggles because i've used just about everything on the market except probably the hdo2s um but everything else i've used and i do have so we could go over those and check those out and some other things as well. And, well, everything's linked down below. If you could check that out, it was a really support channel, guys. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.